Hi folks, Titus Murray here from Southern Highlands Structural Geology. We've had uh, an East Coast low here uh, over the last few days, all the rivers in spate. So I thought I'd bring you this look at Carrington Falls. Anyway, the, today's lecture is about Block 5, uh, the Mazoon field, looking at how we can use fault risk to better understand attic oil. Hope you enjoy it. Hi, we're here to talk about the Mazoon field. Um, uh, it's in Block 5, onshore Oman. Um, it's a set of slides that give you an idea about how fault risk works. It, um, it's the, the background to how fault risk works is in Murray et al. 2019. Um, this work I've done together with uh, Bill Power from Power Geoscience. And it's um, if you want background on how fault seal works or how fault risk works, there's a, more on the YouTube channel we've got. And it hasn't been commissioned by any clients. It was just data we found out on the internet. Um, it's there f in the APG Search and Discovery, which is a fantastic resource. Uh, lots of conference papers and many companies over time have been fantastic at publishing data. And that means that we can actually do science and look at how things work. Now, in this case, it's not uh, strictly doing science, but we're, we're exploring um, how attic oil works or how to think about attic oil. So <clears throat> on, it's block five. It's part of the Dalil uh, region. Um, as said, it's from this um, Zhao paper uh, in the, the APG Explorer. So in the paper, there's a depth structure contour map, um, and that really helps us understand what's going on with the geometry of the field. So there are a set of faults marked on this depth structure contour map. The contour is obviously marked in with con nicely posted intervals. We've got a scale bar. We've got uh, units on the side. So there's everything we need to do uh, a fault trap analysis in here and have a look at fault geometries. Um, one thing to note is that the faults which is something I like, then they're narrow. They've, they've, they're, um, the faults have got relatively small displacement, and so they haven't, been, they haven't got whopping great big fat uh, displacement profiles in there. They've, they've chosen to put them in as vertical or very, very narrow fault polygons. So we're going to have a look at some of these fault geometries, and we're going to do a trap analysis of this central block in here. We've got two producing wells, uh, two sets of producing wells either side of this block, and it's sort of we're looking at well, how much is in, inside that horse block, that central horse block, and, and how much of it is attic oil. Um, it's obviously it's a skinny fault block, it's a thin fault block, so it hasn't been developed. So we georeference the map in fault risk, and then use the digitizing tool to digitize the displacement profiles. And you know it, the fact that we've got all of the units there means that we can be pretty accurate about the horizon fault intersections and in particular it's these a and b fault or uh, northeast uh, southwest fault they're going to be important in this trap so let's have a look at the displacement profiles so for the a fault this is the football for the a fault i haven't digitized we got to the edge of the map and we can't exactly see what's going on in here and the same in here but i've digitized most of it and you can see there's the foot wall the black line here the gray is the down throw and hang wall um this is our um, observed displacement pro throw profile and then uh giving a um theoretical profile through there now often i'd go and have a look at the heave of these things but because they've put them in vertical faults which I, I fully agree with these sorts of features you know we're talking about 60 meter maximum 60 meter displacement more like um sorry maximum 70 meter displacement more like 60 meters it's actually really hard to make fault polygons narrow enough in these environments so the b fault on the northeastern side of the the field again up thrown we're standing on in the down thrown side looking back at the up thrown side that's the up thrown there foot wall and there's the down thrown hang wall down here and again we've got a fairly sensible displacement profile now we start to have a look at some of the other faults this C fault is marked through as a continuous feature, but when you have a look at the displacement profile, you can see that it's been overly cor correlated. Uh, it, it doesn't affect the trap analysis we're going to be doing in a little bit, but it's just giving an idea of the sort of QC quality control you need to go through and check your faults. So here we're in the we're in the the foot wall. Um, this is the foot wall here and the hang wall here on the northern bit of this fault, and then the southern bit, we can see that they actually flip over. And so what we've got is so we've actually got two faults, um, this southern bit of the fault here and this northern bit of this fault that have been correlated through um, what's probably a relay ramp and over-correlated. 
Um, so it's really important to go and check those faults because this is a, a, a physically um, near impossible scenario to have, especially given that we have a tip point. So we know we can't have a strike slip fault here. So that tip point, we know we don't have any more displacement, so we can't slide anything past it. So fundamentally, we need to go through and correct those things. <coughs> so C is a single feature. Um, the quality control is super important. It, it's too easy to run these things together and get the wrong lengths. Um, and if you're going to do any fault seal analysis, you really need to check that the, the models are geologically uh, plausible. So it's not just having a watertight model. It's not just going and put, using a, a structure builder to go and make yourself a watertight model. You need to make sure these models make sense. Um, yeah. uh, a child might draw a square wheel on a car, but you'd sit there and look at it and go, well, no, the square wheels aren't going to work. Um, and in particular, you can see, see that that fault C has been mapped to, as being way too continuous. And effectively, faults are two different directions. And looking, thinking about this, it would be erroneous to put this into a, a model. So trap analysis. We've had a quick QC of all the faults. We've looked at them. Ideally, we produce length throw ratios and those sorts of statistics on a wider scale and check for more features. And then we start to look at the trap analysis. So as I said, <clears throat> we're looking for attic oil in this central block, in this um, um, uh, that may or may not be able to be produced from this um, MZN 5H well. So the idea is <clears throat> we've got ourselves horizontal wells, there's slight cartooning, and effectively we're putting our horizontal well, we've got ourselves a horse block sitting up in here. Um, as we start to drain um, from the horizontal well, uh, it gets closer and closer to these leak points or spill points within the structure until we get to the point where we can't produce that oil above the, the well. Now, this is where you need to start to think about the geometry of these features um, and the 3D geometry in particular, and we'll see in the Allen map where that comes into play. Uh, and the geometry, even if you were to make a 3D model, can be somewhat confusing, but it, then you need to go through and check them out. So in terms of the stratigraphy, again, this paper is fantastic. It actually gives us the basics that we need to do an analysis. Um, it's not the easiest to read, but we can actually see that the we've got these different um, stratigraphy. We've got a stratigraphy in here, and this Shueba um, reservoir, which is common through the region, is our main reservoir type. And we can see roughly from these the thicknesses of these. Now, we didn't do this for for, for anyone, so you know we've divided it into four uh, as per the paper. And we've we've estimated the thickness as have a look at the image. So we've got ourselves a you know, three meter top reservoir, a ten meter uh, D reservoir. The B one is five meters, and the B three is is ten meters. So we've gone through and, and put those in. Now they're putting his distributions plus or minus ten meter error on them, uh, plus or minus just five meter error on them. So in some of the other talks we'll we'll look at shale gouge ratio as we published in our paper we see that shale gouge ratio really doesn't work and it it is not at all appropriate to be used in this um carbonate environment um these are carbonates um uh, where we're not seeing significant amounts of clay there might be clastics in the system but it's certainly not appropriate to be using shale gouge ratio so in the map we've got ourselves a crest We've got ourselves a spill point, and it's really worth going ahead and, and I know it seems overkill, cataloging these things whenever you produce a presentation so that people can understand what the most important features are. And so this is where our highest well feature is at approximately 1,200 metres. Now, the well might be slightly different or in around that, but th this is the assumption we're making around this map um, and that that's our fault block. Uh, and we've got the two and now the two faults, fault A and B. We've got a spill point or lowest closing contour at twelve seventy, and we've got ourselves a crest. The crest is only important if we're doing the calculation of the column height, but what we're looking at here is the ability to produce it. And then what we've done is we've simulated this model in three D uh, using ten thousand di different different uh, iterations. And the current well, given that spill point, it can. Um, it can produce up, so the well can produce up to 1200 meters. So we produced a distribution of leak points across this fault to see how much we could produce, where we could produce from. 
Um, and in, and we illustrate those on an Allen map or fault plane profile so we can see what the fluid contents are. So this is all about doing fault seal analysis within the field to understand what's left within a trapped, uh, within a, a horse block. And we do these studies fairly regularly. There's a, there's a fault block that hasn't been drilled uh, near end of life and effectively it's a um, near field exploration opportunity. If it's already pr been produced, so, so by effectively by not by having a high enough leak point then it may not be worth um, putting a well in there. if it's only producing if you've only got 10 or 20 meters column left there to be produced then it isn't worth putting a well in but it may be given the economics of the field if it's it's relatively undrained worth putting a well in so here's the Allen map, and this starts to give you an idea of what we're talking about. What we've done, we haven't shown the hydrocarbons on this side of the page. So this is the B fault. So this is the <clears throat> this is the northern fault, um, and so we we haven't we're not showing the hydrocarbons in the this side. So the, so this side of the fault, the downthrown side, is the light blue, and the purpley colour is the upthrown other side of the fault. And what we're seeing in here is the green is um, uh, the hydrocarbons in there. So, so green is the oil that's in there. Um, and we can start to see where we can and may or may not be able to produce from. So the red line then is the 1,200 metre li line, which gives us an idea about what we can uh, um, get from the well. And you can see that this E1, even though it's a part to a large extent because it's such a skinny reservoir, its leak point is way down dip here. So there's a, a really significant attic of E1 that wouldn't be produced from the well. Because um, really, you'd have to be your well would have to be down at about 1240 metres to be producing oil from it. So as soon as the oil water contact went past 1240 metres, all of this oil in the upthrown side would be unproducible from, from this well. You can see that the, um, the for the, the D, we've got a... Um, We've got a more modest amount of, of hydrocarbon that we might be able to produce from, but still we're going to be missing out quite a bit. Now, so what we'll have to do is have a look at <coughs> the uncertainty on these. So that's a P10 Allen map, P50 Allen map, P90. So you can see that in all of those realisations, the E1, even though it has a significant column there that wouldn't be produced because of this leak point in here. That late point just in here is the one that's controlling it. So if we have a look at the distribution of um, outcomes, these is uh, what we're doing is we're looking at distributions of uh, leak point, which would control our fluid accumulation, and our our we're really at that P ninety case at twelve oh five. Um, where we're starting to see any anything um, that could be produced from the well. So the majority of this E1 within that fault block wouldn't be produced. And it's it's significantly attic oil. So our P50 case up in here, um, we're, we're going to see most of the attic in there. <clears throat> if we start looking at the D uh, sand, the next sand down, we've got more of the sand now, P50 case is sitting more in here. We've got more of the sand is potentially available, but still we're seeing a, a, a significant number of cases where our leak points are deeper than um, the, the well can um, access. Again, a very simplistic, we're just presuming that the well can access anything um, within there, that the sands, that, sorry, that the reservoirs on the, are communicating across the top seals, uh, across the seals. And then for the E1, the, a fair amount of the E1 will actually be produced. Um, uh, <clears throat> so a large amount of the E1 wouldn't be able to be produced from the well because what's happening is we're moving our leak points, move deeper, and we can't get it from the well. So in conclusion, what we've done is we've, rather than using fault risk for an exploration case, we're looking at attic oil and we're looking at well, what's left within in that fit within that block, assuming um, uh, production is highest um, well here. Um, and so we're getting an idea about where the leak points across here are. <clears throat> Based on the proximate well, um, it looks as though there's, there's, there's a significant amount of hydrocarbon left in this fault block. 
um, in terms of vertical column. Whether that's economic or not is a different matter. <clears throat> and it com comes back to, you know, while in many, for many fields around the world, we're trying to work out how to optimize them. And using this sort of trap analysis really helps us to find or increase reserves within existing fields. Um, there are some scenarios um, uh, where we can say, well, look, we can produce across that fault block. And then there are other scenarios where we're saying, well, no, this fault block, even though the rest of the field has been depleted, this fault block here should still have the full co column height. Um, is it worth going and putting a vertical well in there, you know, a cheap and cheerful vertical well in there, and trying to drain it from the top? Hi, I hope you found the talk about the Mazoon field useful. Uh, the next talk we're going to be going through is fault zone hydrogeology. It shows some of the work we've been doing over the last few years, um, looking at how faults and fluid flow are important uh, to aquifer recharge and coal mine development.